Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Schell with Nouvelle Veterinary Research. This is one of our informational videos that we're putting out. Uh, this video today is going to be targeting or looking at the neurological examination of the horse. Uh, kind of giving you a brief overview of what we do as veterinarians. My main goal is to try to relay some information to you so that you can understand what your veterinarian is doing, what the information we're retrieving means, and in some cases, you as the owner um, or trainer can take this information and perform some of these basic exams yourself if you run into an issue. In some of those cases, you can actually gather that data, relay it to the vet, and it can also be very, very helpful to them. So, given that, the biggest question is, is why do we do a neurological exam? Well, to be honest with you, in a lot of cases, it becomes instinctual for us as veterinarians when we go out to examine a horse for a lameness or a medical issue to during our cursory exam to perform somewhat of a basic neuro exam. Um, it just gives us some feedback as to how the neurological system is functioning. Um, in some cases, we can pick up on some deficits. The other main reason we do neuro exams is, is obviously if we're expecting or, or trying to determine whether if we have a case of neurological disease, such as EPM, West Nile, Tripoli, Western, um, herpes, that kind of situation uh, to where we'll do the neurological exam to try to pick up and determine if there are neurological deficits present, um, which helps us with our exam. So to get started with a neurological, neurological examination, we generally will start with our basic cursory examination, which we've discussed in another video, um, taking a listen to the heart, listening to the lungs, the gastrointestinal tract, taking the temperature of the patient, which could be uh, a very uh, valuable information. Uh, but essentially when we're starting the neuro exam after our basic exam, um, in most cases we'll start out up here at the head. Uh, what we're looking at to begin with is the mentation of the animal. Are we depressed? Are we alert? Are we responsive to the environment? Uh, how overall are we personality wise to determine whether if we have got any deficits up there. Um, in terms of the head itself, we are also evaluating cranial nerves. Um, cranial nerves are basically nerves that do come out of the brain stem. They innervate and function um, and, and help the head to function. So we will be looking at things like mentation. We will be looking at positioning the eyes, sagging, drooping, um, looking down here at the nares to make sure that both nares are open, that we're breathing properly. There is not deviation of the muzzles or a drooping of the lips. Um, also looking up at the ears to make sure we've got proper ear positioning. Um, again, that one side's not drooping or the other side is doing what it shouldn't be doing. Uh, basically just looking for symmetry throughout the whole head, making sure we're alert, we're responsive, meditation is what it should be. Um, after the cranial nerve examination, we will then move down the body of the animal, uh, moving into the neck region. Uh, we will oftentimes flex the head from one side to the other, um, trying to determine whether if there's any pain or response to pain um, when we're doing it laterally to one side or the other. In a lot of cases, we will retroflex or push the head down to flex up and in the neck region itself to determine if we have a painful response. We'll also lift the head as well to extend the neck to determine whether if we have a painful response. In cases such as wobblers, which is common in the thoroughbreds, we will have a narrowing or a stenosis here in the cervical region, and in some cases when we flex the head down or raise the head, we will actually cause more compression to that region. In some cases, really bad situations, we'll see the horses actually buckle in the rear end when we do those manipulations. So we will look at the neck, work our way down. As we work our way into the back region, uh, very often we will take a ballpoint pen, very blunt instrument, running along the back here to determine whether we've got a normal response to the animal. Generally, if we're in the lumbar region and we run our pens down, the animals will buckle down in response, essentially trying to get away from the pain. If we are over the uh, um, sacral region when we are doing this, generally what they will do is they will tuck their tails under, trying again to move forward and away from that response. Um, anything out of the normal or away from those typical responses can be uh, basically interpreted as being abnormal. Once we have got the back regions done, we then will move into the legs, which we will discuss now. Okay, one of the biggest things we're looking at with a neurological exam is what we call as proprioception, or more specifically is conscious proprioception. Now, what is conscious proprioception? Essentially, that is the ability of the body unconsciously to know where our hands are, our feet, our legs, without us actually being aware of it. When we're walking, we are utilizing conscious proprioception. We can put our feet and place them properly to move about, same as a horse does, without consciously thinking about things. 
Um, in terms of DUIs and intoxication with people, one of the biggest sobriety tests that they use is hand placement and coordination touching the nose. That's proprioception. Alcohol tends to impair proprioceptive abilities, and it's one of the telltale signs that maybe somebody's had a little bit too much to drink. So when we're looking at horses and trying to determine proprioception, Proprioceptive deficits uh, will become obvious as we're walking and trotting a horse, possibly under saddle at a canter or a gallop. Uh, we will see abnormal foot placement. Sometimes they will be tripping over each other, crossing over, um, stumbling, that kind of jazz. And so those are telltale signs that maybe we've got a proprioceptive deficit. Um, in terms of lamenesses, in a lot of cases with lameness evaluations, we will perform a cursory neurological exam trying to determine do we have proprioceptive deficits because they can often mimic a lameness. Um, it's very, very common in some horses to work a horse up for a lameness. We can't find the source of a problem. In some cases, we can't even pinpoint which leg it's coming from. But when we do the neurological exam, we actually find out they've got deficits and it's more or less linked back to a neurological issue more so than an orthopedic or joint type of problem. So, evaluating conscious proprioception of the horse. One of the first things we'll generally do is walk them off away from us, walk them back, watching foot placement, uh, mentation, how they're responding to their environment, how they are placing their feet. Are they doing it properly? Are they crossing over, stumbling, tripping? Uh, we'll generally move from a walk to a trot, move up to a canter, up to a gallop. If we're really concerned about things we can't really definitively say, we'll move them out to an arena, lunge them both directions, changing leads, determining and making sure that we are doing what we are supposed to be doing. In terms of actual testing, if we feel we've got a deficit, one of the easiest things we generally do is just kind of take the legs and put them into abnormal positions, trying to see whether if the animal themselves determines and is able to detect whether that foot is in an abnormal position and correct it. So, looking at the front legs, one of the biggest things we do is we will take the foot one side to the other, try to cross it over, and see if the animals respond and put it back, like so. Essentially what we're doing is we're putting the foot into an abnormal position, the animal is registering that, putting the foot back. In some cases we've got an instant response, the animal will determine that's not correct, snap it right back. In some cases we actually will cross the legs and the animals will just stand there. Now that is an abnormal response in most situations, but you have to take into consideration the horse's personality, their temperament, what they just got done doing, are they extremely laid back? I've seen several horses that are very laid back in terms of personalities that can cross their legs and they don't respond to it at all. But they move off fine. They trot fine, they canter, they gallop perfectly fine. No stumbling, no other deficits noted. So the point being is you need to take these responses and put it together as a whole and not interpret one thing as meaning everything. So in terms of the front legs, again, we will cross one leg over the other. You do have to be careful that when you are crossing that you do not touch the other leg with that foot or that leg because if we do breeze over and it makes contact, the animals will respond to it as if it's a fly, move the foot right back. So you want to make sure that you're crossing the legs over without touching the other leg. If everything looks good on the left side, we move to the right side. The other thing we can do is take the foot lift it up and try to assume a base wide stance, pulling the leg out to the side and see if we can get them to maintain a base wide stance. In a lot of cases they pull the foot right back, which is what this guy does. Again, they know that's not a normal position. After we're done with the front legs, we will then move to the back legs. Um, here again, we can take the legs, attempt to try to cross them over and see if they respond, which he does. You can also take the back leg, pull it out to the side, see if you can maintain a base-wide stance, and they generally will pull it right back like he is doing. So that's how we evaluate proprioception in those regions. The other evaluations are part of the examination that we will do. Most of the time it's done while we're taking the temperature, is that we will check tail tone as well as rectal tone or anal tone. Uh, we can do that simply by just using our finger and prodding around the anus itself. Normal responses is that they will pucker and tighten up that tissue, which means they're feeling us, they're responding normally. The tail itself, if we manipulate it back and forth, it should be fairly rigid in most instances, meaning again that they are feeling us, they know what we're doing, and they're kind of resisting us. So that kind of helps us to kind of get an overall exam of these guys. Uh, in most cases then, what we will do is walk them off after we've done these cursory exams. 
And we can do what's called as a tail pull, essentially to where is the owner or trainer or one of our assistants is walking the horse off, we can grab the tail, pull them to one side or the other as the person is walking them off. In most cases, again, they've got fairly strong muscle tone and response up here in the lumbar area and the tail, they will pull away from us and go the opposite direction. Horses with fairly uh, significant, uh, so I'm sorry, significant uh, deficits up in this region as we're walking them off and we're pulling on the tail, we can almost pull them perpendicular to the course of the, uh, the gate itself. We will generally check the, uh, the tail pull both sides because sometimes we'll have deficits on one side and not the other. Uh, but it is very, very important to do because it does test uh, neurological function and response. Now we will move outside and see if we can't evaluate him in some small circles and show you how we do that. So we've gone over the basics in terms of the neurological exam, which includes trotting them towards us, away from us, um, even doing a full physical exam, um, flexion tests to rule out lamenesses. Um, we also talked about the proprioceptive uh, tests to check limb placement. Um, one of the final things that I will do is actually take the patient outside. Um, what I try to do to get an idea of how their feet are working um, underneath them is, is we'll start off with some small circles on a lead line and basically keep pulling the horse in tighter and tighter. Uh, my main area of focus is looking down at the horse's feet, looking for proper foot placement. Are we tripping over each other? Are we just pivoting? You know, what are we doing down there? And I will circle them in both directions. And so just to kind of give you an example of what we do, we'll start off on a larger circle. Again, focusing on the feet. And then I'll just pull them tighter and tighter and tighter. Again, just making sure that those feet are crossing over and that there's no tripping, there's no stumbling, there's no interfering going on. And then we'll repeat that circling in the other uh, direction as well. Um, another thing that a lot of practitioners will do to kind of check the cervical region is, is that we will try to raise the head up, back the horses up to see if there's any interference. And in some cases we'll also flex the head down and back the horses up to see how they are moving as well. Again, trying to focus on the feet. Make sure there's no compromise with either one of those manipulations on the uh, proprioception and placement of the feet themselves. Uh, in some cases, we will actually blindfold the horses, put a towel across them, because in some cases of neurological disease, we will have ocular compensation. So if we're really kind of concerned, things are a little bit shady, we'll block the eyes, move the horse around, and see whether if they kind of lose their proprioception or lose their foot placement. So that's our basic neurological exam in general. I hope you find this uh, information useful to you. If you have further questions for us, please reach out to us at www.curost.com and we're more than happy to help you. Thank you.